is my favorite guitar to play um, live. I have another guitar that I just keep at home. It's just like this, but it's a little bit older. But this one, I, I just love playing it. Uh, this is a 1971 Gibson 335, and I found it just magically. It was hanging on the wall in this small town music shop, and I just like the way that it responds to the amp. Um, it really um, feeds back in this beautiful, melodic way. Like, it just kind of sings by itself. And then I like the neck. I could play all my fancy jazz chords and not get my fingers all bunched up. And um, it also has a really cool way of breaking up if I really play it hard and being nice and clean if I'm soft and tender. And that's my favorite kind of way to play. Just like to, uh, I like to feel it. I think I got this in 2003 or four. Um, it's an American Deluxe Tele. It's definitely far from, from being stock. And it just sort of evolved uh, in a really cool way to where I'm designing like a new guitar with Fender that I'm gonna get next year. And it's based on like things that I did to this. So you know, I added the Bigsby. The, the Bigsby and like whammy bars, I use a Jazzmaster too, like a really um, crucial part of my sound. I changed the pickups, these are um, this guy Lindy Fralin in Richmond, Virginia uh, made these for me and they're just they're just stock Tele pickups, they're like his most vintage sounding ones. Like He does a lot of things where you can get like an overwind, where you can make him hotter and louder sounding and I wanted the lowest output most vintage sounding ones. Again, like it's one of those things that like I like the fight in it. This is just sort of an aesthetic thing, but I put gold pick guards on my guitars. These are like anodized gold pick guards. So I usually pick finishes that go well with that. Um, it's just a weird thing that just sort of became my thing. Yeah, when Saves the Day first started, it was so punk influenced, and uh, I really hadn't learned a lot of chords at that point in time because I taught myself. Um, and so I was listening to Jawbreaker and Rancid and stuff like that. So the stuff that I was writing was pretty simple and they had a very distorted, overdriven guitar tone. So the amps that we used were just, you know, classic Marshalls, you know, on 12. And uh, it didn't matter if there was intricate stuff. There, there wasn't anything intricate at the time. And then um, once I started to grow, and learn different notes that you could throw on top of a power chord. Um, I noticed that you couldn't hear it. I wanted to hear that, that color note, um, but when the amp was cranked up to 12, it just got lost in this sort of wash. So that's when, around Stay What You Are, we started to play through different amps, less distorted amps, that still had a rock sound, you know, if you slammed into the strings it would break up and sound really cool and gritty. But if you laid off you could really, you could hear all the notes. And, uh, and that's when my tone started to change, even though I wasn't playing yet on stage. Well, once Arun joined the band, it became very interesting to explore different sounds. Because what Arun can do with the guitar pedals is something I had, I could never even imagine. I'm starting to want to do that stuff too, uh, while he's sort of doing these cool like solos and taking us to outer space. I'm starting to think, well, it'd be really cool if I could uh, get uh, some weirder sounds going, and then both of us are doing sort of strange things and bouncing off one another. So I think more and more there's more delay uh, pedals and um, extra fuzz <laughs> in the right spots mm -hmm. and feedback and stuff like that. And that's sort of the future of Saves the Day, I think. Sonically, I know like when I build a pedal board and I always think like, this is it, like I got it figured out. And then, a, you know, six months to a year later, it's just always evolving. Like there's some new pedal out or just my ears are just, they, they just, my interests have changed and I'm like hearing things differently the mainstays on my pedal board, I'm a big, I love fuzz pedals. Um, there's a particular circuit called a fuzz face, and uh, this company called Analog Man makes a pedal called the Sun Face, which is basically a reverse engineered fuzz face. The cool thing about it is that it's just so musical. Like, it's not like one of those pedals you just turn on and you just 
get this wall of sound like you actually have to play into it like there's still a struggle there and most of the things I try to do I try to make it a little difficult on myself and I love the musicality that certain pedals have so the fuzz face is in, in particular like really musical for overdrives pr probably like a tube screamer uh, circuit like a TS-808 I use a boutique one this company called MJM and they basically just made a classic style tube screamer I don't get into a lot of the modded ones because I know a lot of people don't like the mid-range hump it adds, but I play Fender guitars into Fender amps, and I, I love mid-range. And then other than that, some kind of analog delay. I, I need it to be real because I notice the difference in like the way that repeats trail and all that. So those types of things are like mainstays for me, and everything else can you know, come together.